We are the Fry Street Quartet, and we would like to welcome you to this two-night concert event entitled Crossing Borders, 21st Century Music from Diverse Voices. These programs were developed in collaboration with the Kane College of the Arts visiting composer-in-residence, Gabriella Lina Frank. This semester, for the first time, we've devoted the student chamber music experience entirely to new works. And in this case, we really do mean new works. Each of the program will conclude with a world premiere commissioned for this project through a partnership between Utah State University and the Gabriella Lina Frank Creative Academy of Music. 21st century musicians need 21st century skills. And there is a wide range of exciting and challenging music being written right now. The opportunity for each of our students to work directly with living composers has been a source of great inspiration throughout this entire semester. Students and faculty have come out of this experience with greater sense of the privilege that making music in collaboration with a composer truly is, as well as a broader appreciation for the great quality and variety of music that is being composed today. Alongside the challenges of this past year, new opportunities have emerged too. Throughout the semester, student groups have been holding virtual sessions with their composers. A certain amount of virtual work was always intended to be part of this project as a means to create a residency model with a low carbon footprint. But of course, we've seen this technology make a quantum leap this past year. And this has made it possible for these sessions to happen long distance and yet still create personal connections and really valuable musical interactions. We would like to thank the Kane College of the Arts, the Tanner Charitable Trust, and the Marie Eccles Kane Russell family for their support of this residency. Please join us after the programs for a live Q&A and reception via Zoom. Just follow the links. We would now like to introduce Gabriella, coming to us from California and ask her to give us a little more background about her creative academy of music and to tell us about the composers we'll be hearing from tonight. Hi, my name is Gabriella Lina Frank and I'm the founder of the Gabriella Lina Frank Creative Academy of Music. I'm speaking to you from my home here in Boonville, California. It is my very great pleasure to not only be composer in residence with the Kane College of the Arts at Utah State University, but to also bring GLF Cam to this wonderful partnership. GLF Cam was founded in 2017, so we're not a very old organization. And after I spent almost three decades both training and working as a composer, I founded this academy in order to provide a safe space for composers who consider themselves emerging within the classical and or classical crossover mediums to grow their skill sets, to make new friends, and to possibly, just possibly broaden their definition about what they think composing can mean. My hope is that they will include more acts of citizenship, not just become incredible artists, but to think about growing the audiences of for music. And this can mean advocating for racial equality, it can mean talking about the climate crisis, it can mean telling their stories, the stories that they think that this world needs to hear. I should say also that this partnership between me and the Academy and the King College of the Arts would not be possible without the friendship and the hospitality of the remarkable Fry Street Quartet. And they are stewarding this entire residency as well as this two-part concert series that we are beginning tonight. This two-part concert series, Crossing Borders, is about celebrating the incredible breadth of voices that we have among our artists, who are indeed telling their stories, and the stories are retold through the capable hands of the students at the music school. So this has been a really exciting experience to be able to workshop virtually through this time of COVID, and to also have these discussions about what it means to be an artist in the 21st century. Tonight's concert is going to feature the music of Andrew Rodriguez with a world premiere. I'm going to let Andrew talk more about his music and his piece, 
and his experience working with the musicians. But I would like to point out that Andrew is a CREA fellow. CREA, which stands for Composers for Racial Equality in the Arts, is an important program at JLF Cam. It provides composers of color with mentors that themselves are of color and have shared experiences in a field where it's still very difficult for somebody like me to find a mentor, somebody that has been there and done that with those shared experiences. As it turns out, two of the other composers on tonight's program are also affiliated with GLF Cam, and that will be Kenji Bunch and Jesse Montgomery. You will also hear the work of Anjana Swaminathan, another alum of JLF Cam. She, like Andrew, who comes from a long life, really long career as a touring punk, hardcore musician, Anjana comes from a long life as a singer, dancer, and violinist in a Carnatic Indian tradition. And she will be on hand to also talk about her piece. I'm so excited for you to be able to hear the work of these amazing composers. They inspire me, and I'm sure they will inspire you as well. Thank you for joining us. Hi everybody, my name is Anjana Swaminathan, and I am the composer of Duplicity. Uh, this piece is actually inspired by a short story that I wrote about my mother, so I'll be reading that as in lieu of a description. Perhaps one of the memories most emblematic of my mother's penchant for the accidentally radical, the intentionally comical, and the quixotically paradoxical, was when she won a yodeling competition in Germany. She was a vocalist and dancer trained like many of her South Indian peers in Carnatic music and Bharatanatyam, South Indian classical dance and music. But she had also acquired a masterful skill of replicating any voice she heard, regardless of whether it matched her traditional Carnatic training. So, when presented with the opportunity to yodel among later Hosen class clad German choir singers, my mother hopped on stage, adorned in her brightly colored sari. The German choir singers stood alongside her, holding in anticipatory laughs as they waited what might be the most comical coming together of cultures their yodeling competition would ever see. She stepped up to the mic and outsoared my mother's perfectly timed and unwaveringly tuneful yodel. The audience of beer drunken tourists and natives stood up in a roar of cheer and laughter as my amma was instantly deemed the winner of that day's yodeling competition. How wonderfully you have yodeled for us today. We must give you a prize. How about we sing your country's national anthem and maybe you can sing with us. He looked again once, he looks once again at his fellow singers and he starts singing. Janaka namana adinayaka, I'm from the United States. My mother interrupts into the mic. But you're wearing yes and I'm an American. And so my sorry clad mother firmly planted her right palm on her heart, rose the microphone to her lips, and led the German choir in a rendition of O Say Can You See. Indeed, my mother's artful, though accidental, cultural duplicity has proven to be comical, thought-provoking, and outright confusing. And whether or not by intention, these nuggets of liminality consistently pushed those around her to question their own boundaries of culture, nation, music, and costume. While rehearsing this piece, I encouraged the players to think of this piece as a game of catch between four members. Sometimes they're all holding the ball together. Sometimes they're just taking turns. I hope you enjoy all of the duplicity and rhythmic quirks of this work, Duplicity. Thank you so much.
Hi, I'm Kenji Bunch, and I'm the guy who wrote the three American folk hymns for two violins. I wrote this piece about 20 years ago for my good friends, violinists Cornelius Dufalo and Amy Kaufman. And actually, Amy's parents commissioned the work, and they selected the three hymns that I set in this arrangement. Uh, I'm a classical violist myself, um, and in addition to that, I have a deep interest in American folk music and folk fiddling, specifically, I, I fiddle, and uh, I brought a lot of, inf of that influence into this work. So you'll hear double stops, uh, drone notes, passages that sound almost like a guitar and banjo, and um, at times it'll sound like more than two people playing. Uh, so I, I just brought in a lot of the inflections and vocabulary of that music into the work and a kind of um, Americana sound to it. Uh, these were beautiful, timeless hymns that have been around for hundreds of years, and I saw my job as trying to not screw them up. So I hope you enjoy what I did with them, and I... Uh, really appreciate the performers this evening and thank you for listening.
Hello, I'm Jessie Montgomery, composer and violinist. And I wanna tell you a little bit about my piece, Strum. Strum was written in 2008, originally for string quintet. So a string quartet plus an extra cello like you'd find in the Schubert cello quintet. And then in 2012, I revised it for string quartet and changed the ending. I added the sort of flashy and driving ending that's typically performed. And really the piece is based on this driving pizzicato rhythm that's presented after a slow introduction. And that rhythm is a fun opportunity for string players to, to strum all four strings at once and create a sort of folk-like, guitar-like driving uh, groove. And so that groove rhythm kind of pulls us through the entire piece and other things to listen for are the melodies and the way that the melodies sort of get tossed around and hocketed between the instruments. And so it's really a very active and acrobatic piece for string players, it can be. I hope you enjoy Strum.
Hi, my name is Andrew Rodriguez, and I'm the composer of the piece entitled Loved and Feared. When I was first given the opportunity to write for these students, I was given the instrumentation of violin, clarinet, piano, and percussion, and immediately my mind just thought, oh, the possibilities. It's such a cool and unique instrumentation, and I really wanted to exploit the different sound worlds they could create together as an ensemble. A lot of this piece is really about that idea of performing as a unit, as one whole unit, an ensemble together. And I wanted to contrast the different types of sounds the performers could achieve as a unit by kind of smashing them together in these sharp, distinct sections of the piece. Um, this concept of performing as an ensemble rather than going between various soloists within the ensemble. You know, I really wanted to push the boundaries of what that means, what it means to perform together, this idea of cohesion and unity as a, as a, as a performing ensemble. So there are various sections of the piece where the performers have a little bit of free reign to kind of push those boundaries. And then there are other sections where it requires strict precision uh, as a unit and everybody is working together to create this one unified sound. Um, at one point toward the end of the writing process, I was listening to a podcast. And in the podcast, the hosts were talking about a sort of fictional cult leader that they were discussing. And one of the hosts described that, that cult leader as wanting to be loved by their followers. And then immediately the other retorted, you know, maybe they wanted to be feared. And as I was listening, I thought, you know, this kind of person, maybe wanting to be loved or wanting to be feared is really pushing to achieve the same thing, this idea of power. And I thought, you know, that kind of falls in line with what I'm doing in this piece. L disregard, you know, the idea of love and or fear, but this idea of two opposing sort of sentiments that ultimately are trying to achieve the same thing within the same piece. They're trying to achieve this idea of cohesion, this idea of unity as an ensemble in just various different ways and how they differ, but also how they're alike especially when they sound so much different on the surface. Um, so, in the end, the piece kind of travels through various musical sections, and the performers have to kind of switch how they think about performing in an ensemble, because each section requires a different sort of frame of mind of what that means to be performing in an ensemble. Uh, the students and the faculty were such a pleasure to work with, even given these limitations of, you know, the virtual collaboration. It was always such a joy to have uh, the workshops with them, and they were so responsive and had great questions. And so I just want to give a huge thank you to everybody working on this project. It has really meant a lot, and I hope you enjoy the piece.
Thank you. 